Welcome back to your course. Today we're going to be going over the Mini Educator Two Dog System, or also known as the ET302. We're going to go over all of the settings and all of the things that you're going to need to know before you use your collar on your dog. This video will really set you up with a good foundation of understanding how to use this e collar properly. So let's get started. Before you start playing around with your e-collar, you're going to want to go to ecollar.com and register your e-collar for warranty. This will make sure that if anything goes wrong with your collar, it'll be under your name and e-collar technologies will be able to help you fix it. When you go onto ecollar.com, you'll want to go to register for warranty. You're going to put in the model number here and the serial number here that came with your collar. It will also ask you where you bought the collar from, your name, your address, and information like that. Inside your box, you will find a controller, two collars, a lanyard, some extra stuff here, and a charging cord. Underneath this tray, you will find a manual for the collar, a warranty registration card if you'd rather register your collar for warranty through the mail. You will also receive a notice about possible metal allergies. We will talk about this more as we go along. And you will also get an information card on how to prevent your collar from getting water damage. This collar is 100% waterproof but you want to make sure you follow the instructions that are laid out here so that it remains that way. Also, possible metal allergies. Just like humans, some dogs can have metal allergies. Just like some people can't wear metal earrings, they always have to wear gold. Same with dogs. Some dogs can get a rash from the metal on the contact points of the collar. The contact points are right here. So if your dog does get a metal allergy from those contact points, You'll want to go onto ecollartechnologies.com and order some hypoallergenic contact points. Okay, so here are all of the components that come with your e-collar. You have extra long contact points, a test light, this tool removes the contact points off of your collar, this tool removes the shell off of your remote, this is your charging cord, it has two ports here, so you'll be able to charge both your collar and your remote at the same time. You also have a manual. You also have here the remote, which is also called the transmitter. And you have both of your collars, which are also called receivers. In the manual here, it will be classified either as receivers or transmitter. So with the two dog system or the 302, in the manual here, the second half of the manual, so after you get to the staples in the center, wherever that is, right here, once you reach the staples in the center, this whole backside is explaining the 302 collar, which is the two dog system. So what we're going to do today is go over all of the functions, how everything works, and if you guys do have any questions after this, make sure you let me know. I'm going to quickly show you how to change a contact point as well and how to change the skin on your remote. So to change the contact points, you're going to use this little tool that came with. You're going to slip the tool over top of that contact point and just unscrew it like so. And then you can just twist off the contact point like that, put a longer contact point on. 
and then tighten it with this again. So now that contact point is longer than the other one. You'd want to make sure both of them are the same length, but that's how you would change a contact point. To change the skin on your remote, so if you wanted a different color skin, uh, if you didn't want black, you wanted to change to a pink or a blue or a red, you can contact eCollar Technologies, they'll send you different skins. But what you'll do is you'll take this little tool and put it into this little crack here, kind of pop that open, pop that open, that skin comes off, same with the front, pop off both sides here, skin comes off, and now that's just the kind of inside components of your remote. Pretty much looks the same, but you can always change to different colored skins if you'd like to. And then to put them back on, you just pop them back on like so. There you go. First, we are going to go over how to turn your collar on or your remote on. On the back side of the remote, there's an on off button right here. There's also a tiny little MC button right here. What we're going to do first is hold this on off button down until it says on on the front screen. And now it's on. Next, we're going to turn on our collars by using this little tiny red dot here on the side. This little dot right here is a magnet. This is a magnet as well, and this is a magnet as well. So when you connect these two together, so red dot there with red dot on the collar, it should turn green like that, and it will blink green every five seconds that it's on. Same with this collar here. You connect those two together, it turns green, and now both of the collars are on. Settings. I'm going to turn everything off. So you just connect those two dots there, and this should turn red. And then you press and hold this on off button here until the screen turns off, like that. To charge your collar, you'll want to open up the little charging port right here and you'll want to put one charger in there. Same with this side. One charger there, and then you can plug those in together like so. When you're done charging, make sure that these little tabs right here are fully closed because that's what's keeping it waterproof. So both of those are closed there. To charge your remote, you open the little tab right here on the bottom and you put that into there. With the two dog system, they always come with a splitter for the charger so you'll be able to charge everything at the same time. It is a two hour rapid charge so after two hours your collar and your remote will both be fully charged. We recommend not keeping them charged and plugged in overnight because you don't want to overcharge your remote or your collar and kill your battery. So make sure that you only plug it in for two hours. When it's starting to charge, it'll first be red and then once it's fully charged, this light will turn green on all of these devices here. So you'll know it's fully charged when there's a green light on all of these once it's plugged in. Next we're going to talk about testing your collar with the test light here. So this little thing that came with your collar is a test light. So the way that you're going to use that is put the test light onto the two contact points right here. You can hold that on there. You're going to start low and work your way up. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but a little tiny light will light up on this test light here. So I'm making sure to press the stimulus on the side here. You can't really see the little light. I'll go up here. There we go. This is a test light that shows you the stimulation that's going through your collar. The higher you go on the remote, 
the brighter that light gets. So if you go all the way up to high or 100, it's really bright. If you go down to, let's see, an 11, it's not as bright. So before each use, you want to make sure that your collar is working properly. So let's just check this one as well. There we go. Yeah, there's a tiny little light there. Let's go all the way up to high. This collar is working great as well. Another way that I test to make sure that the collars are working is by turning the remote to vibrate. So the way that you'll do that is press the T button on the side here. Now it's on vibrate because there's a 7R on the screen. And now both these will be vibrate. So one dog, vibrate, two dog, vibrate. Next, we're going to go over all of the functions of the remote and how you can change things for your collar. First, we're going to talk about the modes that you that you will be in during your training. So, so on the screen there, you should see that there's an M and a 1D on the top is blinking. That means that your remote is on momentary and this is one dog. The top black button right here is one dog and this red button here is two dog. When you turn your remote on, you should see it'll blink, be blinking either 1D or 2D. The 1D is on the top there. There's also a 0 and an M. What M stands for is momentary. Momentary stimulus is a quick tap even if you hold the button down. So I'll demonstrate that here. If we turn this to 5, like so, it's on five, and I click the one dog collar, which is this black collar here. So I click and hold this momentary button on the side. I clicked it, I'm still holding, it only did that one little tap. So I'll show you guys that again. Momentary, so that's what momentary looks like. It only does one little tap of stimulus, even if you hold it down. It will also do it on the other collar here, if you click the red button, which is this collar, it will only do a momentary tap, like so. If you turn your remote to continuous, the way that you'll do that is by going to the back of the remote here. There's a little MC button right here what you'll do is click and hold it down until that M turns into a C. So I'll show you guys how to do that here. So I have my finger on the MC button here. I'm going to turn it over and hold it down until that M on the side turns into a C. It also beeped once. So now you can see there now you should be able to see there is a C beside the zero instead of an M. That means that both of these collars are now continuous. So, if so right now for the example I have this set to five, it's on continuous. If I press the black button here on the side, it's paired to the black collar and it will continuously go as long as I'm holding it down. It's still going and then I let go and it turns off. If I press the red button, which is connected to the orange collar here, it continuously goes as long as I'm holding it down. Both of these buttons here are your stimulus levels. The stimulus is that TENS machine feeling when you have this on yourself. You probably have already felt the collar on yourself by now, and you should know what the feeling feels like but you do want to keep in mind that these are your stimulus levels for whichever dog you have the collar on. You might have one dog on this one and one dog on this one, and right now they're both set to a four continuous. It just turned a little bit there, so four continuous. So again, I'll show you guys that. Black continuous, 
red continuous. There. So one dog continuous, two dog continuous. Next, we're going to go over vibrate. So this T button on the side, this tiny little button on the side by itself, it has a little T on it. It's a little bit hard to see right now in the video, but there's a T there. That is vibrate. So what you'll do for the two dog system here is you'll click that T button. The collar will say 7R. And now both of these collars are vibrate. So if I click the one dog right here, it vibrates the collar. If I press the two dog right here, it vibrates the second dog collar. So that is the vibrate. When it says 7R on the screen, that means that both of the collars are in vibrate. To go back, you'll press the T button again right here, and now it will go back to your stimulus, which is set to eight at the moment. Next, we're gonna go over boosters. So right now, the remote is set to five. To set the booster or to use the booster on each collar, what you're going to do first, if I want to boost this collar, first I'm going to hold the five down or the side button right here. I'm gonna hold this down. And then I'm gonna press the second button on the side. So it went from five to 10. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'll do that again here. So right now, the remote is set to five. I'm doing continuous five. The dog isn't listening. I want to do a booster. Next, I'm going to press the second button here and it goes up to 10. These collars come factory set with a booster of five. So if you are on five and you press this and then this, it'll go up to 10. So I'll show you what that looks like on the side. So you first press your one dog, your dog isn't listening on a five, then you press the second button here and it goes up to a 10. You can do the same with the second dog. What you wanna do is first press the second dog and then press the other button. So you're gonna press, keep it held down, and then the second button. That's how you'll do your booster. You can also change your booster if you want a higher level than five. So right now, when I'm on a five and I do a booster, it goes up to 10. If you want to set your booster as say 15, if you were on five and you clicked this button and then this button, it would go up to 20 because your booster is 15 and you are on the working level of five. So I'm gonna show you guys how to change your booster level. Okay, so to change your booster level from the factory level of five to a different level, what you're going to do is first make sure that your remote is on M, which is momentary. The way that you would change it to M is by pressing this MC button on the back. So once it's on M, what you're going to do is make sure that the intensity level is at zero on the screen. I don't know if you guys can see there's a zero there. And then what you're gonna do is press and hold the black S button on the side right here until the zero turns into a blinking one. So I'm gonna hold this down, wait till it starts blinking one. There we go, now it's blinking one. Oh, it turned off there, let's do that again. Now it's blinking one. So I'm gonna go and change my intensity or my booster intensity level to Let's do 15, 15. Once you've done that, you're going to press the black S button once again, and now there should just be a solid 15. Turn it back down to zero, and you can test it. So to do that, again, you go to five. You're gonna press the black collar here. You're gonna press the black collar here and then go the second one here. Right now it's on momentary, so it will do a momentary boost instead of a continuous boost. So five, I press the second one, it goes to 20 there. So five, 20. So with the orange collar, 
or the second dog collar here. Because I only just changed the booster for the black collar, this one's still going to be set to a booster of 5, and this one here is going to be set to a booster of 15. So if you have one dog that is really sensitive to the collar, you can have one dog with a higher booster and one dog with a lower booster. The way that you change the booster for the other collar is turning it to zero, making sure there's an M right there on the screen. You're going to hold the red button down or the two dog button down until the zero turns into a one, like so. And then let's change the orange collar to a booster of 25. You're going to click the red button again to set that level. Let's go down to five. So we're on a five. You're gonna, I'm going to press the five momentary and then I'm going to do a booster because I'm still holding down that red button. And it went up to 30 because my booster is 25. So I'll show you guys that again. Five for the two dog on the side. I still have my button pressed down there. And then I'm going to click the black one and it turns to a 30. I'm also going to show you guys that on continuous. So if I press the MC button here and I hold it down until the M turns into a C, like so, now it's on continuous. So I'm going to do a continuous five for the two dog. And then I'm going to do the booster, which brings it all the way to a 30. So that's how you would set your boosters for each collar individually. Next, we're going to go over how to use the light. So there's a light for each of these collars, and you want to turn them on individually. So on your screen, if there's the 1D that's blinking, that means that you are on one dog or your first dog right now. To turn on the light, I usually turn it to zero, just so that when you change over to your second dog, you're not using a stimulus. So you have it on zero, 1D is blinking or solid, just one D is on the screen. You're going to press the L button on the back here. So the on off button or the light button, you're going to press it once to have a blinking light, once to have a solid light, and a third time to turn it off. Same with the orange one here or the second dog here. You're going to go over, make sure that it's on second dog or two dog. So now you can see on the bottom the 2D is blinking there. You're going to click the L button once, click the L button again, now it's on, solid, click again, it's off. So one click is a blinking light, second click is a solid light, third click you turn the light off. If you want to leave these lights on when you go camping, they're always great to use. So if you want to turn both dogs on, you'll do your one dog, you'll click the black button or the button for your first dog, you'll click the L button here. Now both of the dog's lights are on. When you turn off the collars by using this little red dot here, it'll turn the light off so that when you turn them back on, the light doesn't remain on. The other way to turn the light off is by going to that third click. Next what we're going to do is show you how to lock levels. So if you have one dog that works on a 5 and your other dog works on a 20, the dog that works on a 5 you'll want to lock at a 5 so that if you press the remote and it's on a 20, it's not going to use a 20 on your dog that actually only needs a 5. So the way that you'll do that is make sure that whatever dog you want to lock is blinking first. So right now on the screen the 1D on the top is blinking and the 1D is this collar here and the black button on the side here. So I have this dog here set to a 5 on the remote. I'm going to make sure that that's the right dog, the 1D is blinking, they're on a 5. What you're going to do is hold this little um, dial down here, the 1D isn't blinking anymore, that means that you're locked on that level for that dog.
One other setting that you can do on your two dog system here is changing your vibrate button to tone. In your manual here on page 19, it'll explain how to change from vibrate to tone. The way that you do that is you make sure your collar is set to zero. You're going to press the L button on the back and the T button and it should beep once and there should be an A that pops up on the screen. When you do that, both these collars are now changed to tone. So that means that when you go over to 7R, it's not going to be vibrate anymore, it's now going to be tone. So if I click the black button and the one dog here, you hear the tone and then it does stimulus. Same with this one here. So the tone goes off for 1.2 seconds. After the tone turns off, the stimulus goes through the collar. So I'll explain that here. If you are on 14 for your dog's working level and you change over to 7R or tone, when you press the red button or the two dog, it's going to do tone for 1.2 seconds and right now it's doing stimulus, continuous stimulus. So if you left your collar on 14, it's going to be doing a stimulus of 14 through these contact points after that tone stops. So you press the red button here, the two dog here, did that beep, now it's doing stimulus. Same with the one dog here. If your one dog, this one here, is locked at a five, when you do tone, the stimulus right now that comes after that tone is only going to be a five. But if your remote set to a 14, this dog isn't locked, then after the tone stops, it's going to do a stimulus of 14. So I hope that makes sense for you guys and how the tone works. If not, you can read through the page here, page 19, and it'll explain it to you a little bit more. So that's all of the settings of the ET302 or the Mini Educator 2 Dog System. If you guys have any more questions, definitely let me know. I hope this video explained everything thoroughly for you and it made you understand it a little bit more. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you guys soon.